the beginnings of Global Witness, Simon Sharman and I met while working for an environmental organization. We were interested individually and coincidentally in Cambodia and the Khmer Rouge rebel group, notorious for their genocidal policies. Khmer Rouge at that stage were in the forested areas and basically they were cutting logs and exporting them to Thai-based companies. And we asked ourselves the question, is this an environmental problem? Is this a human rights problem? The three of us just instinctively, I think, saw where the two overlapped, so where environmental destruction was often funding abuses of human rights. No organisation at that time was looking at that nexus. And what we did was to basically pose as log buyers. We travel around the border and we ask questions as buyers. Where did you get the logs from? How much? You know, who did you pay, etc., etc. And they told us everything, which we filmed. It went front page the next day, and they shut the border. And we basically took their money away. So that was the beginning of us. With the collapse of the Khmer Rouge, Global Witness zeroed in on the intersection of natural resource exploitation, corruption, and conflict. Global Witness's investigations always follow the money. We look at the roots of conflict, corruption. Where is the money coming from? Where is it going? This focus led them to look at the drivers of conflict and environmental destruction, and how to combat corruption in the extractive sector and the international financial system, including anonymous companies. These are companies set up all over the planet, and nobody really knows who owns them. And it's a charter for companies ripping off and looting resources from impoverished countries. It's misused because of the anonymity. Global Witness has pioneered global campaigns for corporate transparency. And the organization created the Publish What You Pay campaign, which is now a global movement advocating for financial transparency in the extractives industry. We follow the evidence, and the evidence tells its own story. When I look around me, surrounded by abundant reserves of diamond, iron ore, timber, it baffles me that people live in the type of poverty that I see in my communities. We got no place to go. Mm -hmm. This is our home. In this is our land. Our great-grandfather, they born oil and we grew up here. Yesterday we were visiting villages that are being absolutely squeezed down by palm oil concessions. The palm oil industry is extremely lucrative and as they exhaust their own forests, they're looking to Africa to expand. Can you explain what happened? They have gone. They harm us and they tie all the be all they do their day, tie me. The government actually deployed paramilitary units to engage in different acts of violence against those communities. We will be working with local and national civil society groups and with all of you to try and protect the right that you have in these lands. The overall mission, of course, is to make sure that natural resources benefit the countries that they come from and the people that should be benefiting from those natural resources.